this church can we be on our feet this morning can you turn that chorus to a prayer this morning can you empty your heart to the Lord this morning can you ask the Lord to make you whatever he has purposed to make you ask the Lord to make you that special purpose vessel that he has ordained in your life I need us to understand that is not going to be a question of what did you do when you came to this world, but whether you met the purpose of God for your life. So this morning, if you don't take anything away from the presence of God this morning, is to lay hold on the purpose of God for your life, for my life, for your family, for his church. This morning, for a second or so more, speak to the Lord and say, Father, make me your vessel make me your offering that which you have purpose in this generation that has my name on it Lord I will not fail you thank you everlasting father be thou glorified Lord for in Jesus awesome name we have prayed God bless us can we be seated it is a privilege and a pleasure once more this morning to join us for as many that are also joining us online God bless you thank you for choosing to spend your Sunday morning with us. I mean, you have a range of choices of what you could have done with your time, but you are choosing to spend this next few minutes in the presence of God. And I'm trusting the Lord will meet us, meet you, meet you and I at the point of our needs in the mighty name of Jesus. This month, the theme the Lord gave unto his church is that you and I, we are God's special purpose vessel. Thank God for the way the service has gone so far this morning. Thank God for even the prayers. Because I need us to grab hold of what we are about to discuss this morning. Beginning from the unpacking that our senior pastor did last week. A recognition that unless you are running the purpose of God for your life, it will not matter whether you become the prime minister of Canada. If you miss the purpose of God for your life. And unless you are running in that purpose, and I think that's why that song becomes, that chorus we sang, becomes a prayer point, a point of call to say, Lord, make me your vessel. Make me whatever you have purposed me to be. You came into this world with nothing. It doesn't matter whether your name is on the top of the Forbes list. You will leave this world with nothing. I can guarantee you that one. You came into the world with nothing. You will leave with nothing. Unless you meet God's purpose. In the time of Noah, God used a physical ark made of wood to deliver his people. Noah met purpose. In the time of Joseph, 
to deliver the whole of Israel, he needed a man. He used Joseph for that purpose. So if you don't meet that purpose, it doesn't matter what else you achieve. And to the glory of God, how God inspired the Bible study department, that this first quarter, they are focused on our Christian growth and maturity. We have been looking at different aspects of it. And one thing that has come into focus over this last four, two, two, three, two months plus, going to the third month in the month of, in the month of March of the year 2023, is an understanding that if I'm going to meet that purpose which God has ordained for me, it will require growth. It will require maturity. And I'm trusting the Lord is speaking to somebody this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. It, that you and I, we are clay in the hand of God who is the potter. And so this morning, recognizing that you and I, we are just clay, we are vessels, we are container for God to pour his purpose into the question I want to ask us or the topic of our discussion this morning is what manner of special purpose vessel am I? Recognizing that in the time of Noah, it was a wooden structure of an ark that was used. In the time of Joseph, he used the life of that man, that generation of Joseph, to deliver the entire people. The nation of Israel was delivered by the hand of Joseph, because God positioned him to be that ark, that purpose, that vessel. He poured himself into him, into Joseph, and he was able to accomplish that purpose. What manner of special purpose vessel? As you read through the Bible, you notice the Bible uses the vessels, you know, repeatedly. Vessels of wrath, vessels of mercy. We'll talk on, touch one or two of them this morning. But I need you to begin to ask yourself that question. As you reflect on that chorus, I came into this world with nothing. It's certain I will live with nothing. So Lord, make me whatever you have purposed me to be. Can you turn with me in your Bible to the book of 2 Timothy? 2 Timothy chapter 2. I want to read from verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let me read from verse 19. Okay, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The next verse, please. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. And some to honor, and some to dishonor. The next verse, please. If a man therefore purge himself of these things, he said he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good works. Let's look at verse 22, and I'm stopping there. He said, flee also useful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the, on the Lord out of a pure heart. As you read those scriptures, what manner of SPV am I? Once we look at verse 19, the Lord is laying down clearly for us. If you go back to that verse 19, he said, Nevertheless, the Lord, the foundation of, the God, of God standeth sure. The Lord knoweth them that are his. If you and I, we are going to even meet that purpose, it begins from God knowing me. It begins from God knowing you. So if you are here this morning, maybe you have not given your life to Christ. You have to start from that point. That is the beginning point. Because without it, you can't make the same declaration that Brother Paul did in Galatians chapter 6, verse 17. He said, let no man trouble me. Galatians 6, 17. He said, let no man trouble me because I bear in my body the mark of the Lord. God knows who he is. And peradventure you are in doubt. Even the demons know. Go and ask the seven sons of Sceva. When they try to cast out the demon in the life of that, he said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? Where did you come from? Who gave you the authority? And so if you are going to fulfill the purpose, it begins with God knowing you. He has to know you. He has to know me. If he does not know me, I cannot operate in a purpose that he has not given me. Thank God for the prayer point we were praying this morning during the breakthrough prayer. He said everything for them, they called according to his 
purpose. He is the one that is going to impute that purpose in you and I. And if he doesn't know us, if he doesn't know you, if he has not recognized you, if he has not called you, if you don't, if even if when he calls you, you will not, you, you, you will not recognize his voice. Hello, somebody. Oh, they may, they may say, you know, this is what I want to do with my life. But if that is not what God has called you into, if that is not the purpose of God for your life, thank God for the Sunday school that is layering on top of that as well. That we need to take direction from God when we are making some of these decisions as to what purpose you and I do with our life. If you go to verse 20 of that 2 Timothy chapter 2 that we read earlier, verse 20, it expands for us the possibilities that are available for us as the potter, in the hand of the potter. He said, because in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood. He said, there are possibilities of what God can do in my life and in your life. If only he knows us, beginning from that, so that he can begin to pour himself into us. And if you read verses 21 and 22, he lays down the path that is required if you and I said it begins with purging. It begins with cleansing. Hello, somebody. It begins with you and I positioning ourselves in the paths that will make us meet that purpose. So choices are going to be required. Every one of us as a child of God is a chosen vessel. Beginning from the fact that he knows you. There is a vast array of opportunities that the Lord can do through you and I. Depending on where you are in your journey with him, depending on what he has proposed to accomplish through you, the roles you play may not be to you or to people looking around significant. Without that donkey, Jesus coming into Jerusalem will have been impossible. So you need to understand that there is a purpose that God has for your life recognizing it, the significance that you attach to it is not the same as what heaven attaches to it. Oh yes, you can, you know, we are talking of legacy building now. And you can say, oh, the Lord has blessed you, you just want Lotto 649, good for you. And you decide you are going to give the church 300 million to build the place. But the Bible does not say there is rejoicing in heaven when they build a big mansion, no. Or a big cathedral. He said, but when a life is given unto Christ, when a soul is turned over to Christ, he said, there is rejoicing in heaven. So the world may attach significance to the building, which is good. It's an opportunity for people to come and congregate. But if lives are not being saved in that building, the purpose of heaven is not being achieved. You just have a big, big mighty structure. It's one story somebody was sharing with me years ago of a rich man. That had so much money and he has a big house, you know. And I'm, I think I must have shared this story here before. And the man will stand on the balcony of that house in the, you know, look at somebody standing by his gate. Or say, Move away from there, don't stand around there. He finally died and it's about time to bury him. They are not going to dig a hole more than six feet. And so the madman walking around, that moment the Lord gave him sanity. And he told them, ah, you people need to dig this thing bigger because that is big house that you will not let anybody stand near. You have to put him inside the grave with it. It's impossible to do that. So recognizing that you and I have a purpose. And God is the one that can give us that purpose. The question is, what manner of SPV are you? In Exodus chapter 9 verse 16. As you study through the Bible, like I said, you see a lot of verses referring to verses of these verses of that. And I will examine some of them and maybe give us a bit of a context. So that we can begin to understand that there is more that the Lord can do through us. In Exodus chapter 9 verse 16, the Bible talks about Pharaoh. He said, but I have raised you for this very purpose. That I might show, I'm reading from NIV version. That I might show you my power. That my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Brother Paul was laying up on that teaching in, verses, in Romans chapter 9 verse 22. Romans 9.22, he said, what if God, willing, Romans 9.22, what if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. I pray that will not be the portion of anybody in this house or hearing me online this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. The importance of a realization 
that a vessel can be a vessel of wrath to show the manifestation of the power of God is that if you and I will not be malleable in the hand of the potter, if we not allow him to mold us in a manner that he can use us for a, for a purpose that will be befitting, that will be glorious, that vessel can be a vessel of wrath. So you need to understand that if he, we don't allow the potter to mold us in a manner that is consistent with his plan, if we become difficult to mold in his hand, there is a danger that he hardens the heart of that individual. There is a danger that the, the person becomes a vessel of wrath that the Lord can use to show a demonstration of his power. But I am trusting the Lord is speaking to somebody this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. It begins by God knowing us. Am I malleable in his hand? Am I allowing him to break me down? Brokenness. We, we discussed that for almost three weeks in the Bible study series. Brokenness. It is never a pleasant experience. But there is a greater thing the Lord can accomplish out of it. Vessels of mercy. That's another thing you will see in the Bible. Romans 9, 23. Romans chapter 9, verse 23. He said that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he has afforded prepared unto the glory. As I was doing this preparation and I was looking through some history and looking at something, something struck me. There was something that I read. They said, in, you know, in the Middle Eastern culture, probably because it's a desert area mainly and all of those stuff, there is, in the olden days, they used to have a tradition where in the middle of the city, they have vessels located in different places. And they fill it with jar, with water, sorry. So that when strangers are passing through the town, they don't even need to go and knock somebody's door. They have access to water. Jesus Christ is that vessel of mercy. You and I can also be a vessel of mercy when you are the bringer of good news. The water that quenches the thirst of a stranger going through the town, he doesn't know anybody. He cannot go and knock a door in the middle of the night. They have vests, they, you know, the vessels are arranged in different places. So you just go there, you collect as you desire. The same God that gave the children of instruction in the book of Deuteronomy, when he tells them, when you do your harvesting, he said, leave enough remnant so that people that are, cannot afford it, they can go just, you know, he made provision. So in essence, a vessel of mercy is one that is willing to do whatever it takes to bring the message of the water of life to somebody. Oh, brethren, sometimes it's not convenient. But he will do it anyway, if that soul can be saved. So what manner of SPV am I? Am I a vessel of mercy? Oh, it is, it is, it is sunny. I can't, I, you know, it's, win, it's summertime. I need to be on vacation. I can't be, you know, going on evangelism at this point. Oh, it's winter. It's too cold. In spring, sometimes it may rain. There will be enough excuse to go around. Vessels of mercy will look at that and say, if God has saved me for a purpose, and if the Lord called you for that, you will find that that's what they want to do. That's where you find yourself. If that is the purpose the Lord has been laying in your heart, it is for you to understand that that's the purpose of God for your life. You may have a good voice to lead the choir, but if that does not tie to the purpose of God for your life, you will sing excellently well. In fact, you may even win a Grammy as a gospel musician. But lives are not touched. Then the purpose has been defeated. They carry life sustenance. The vessel of mercy is not afraid of action. They meet the challenge. And out of the rubble, they bring out the rose smelling like find things. That is what a vessel of mercy is. And then you have a situation where even though I have come to experience Christ, like a lot of people have, you find in the book of First John chapter 9, chapter 5, sorry, First John chapter 5 verse 9, he said if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The dirty vessel by my characterization or the, the, the way the Lord laid into my heart. Maybe a life that God knows, but he has 
drifted away. He has drifted away from the purpose and the plan of God. It has become contaminated with sin. Maybe sin that you feel is so heavy, you can't even divert to somebody. And it's weighing you down. Paradventure, you see, find yourself in that situation this morning. Thank God for the God that we serve. The Bible says the Lord is not interested in the destruction of sinners. But his interest is for them to come back unto him. So if you are harboring sins in your life, if we are going through a situation that you think, oh, if I tell the people I'm, you know, dwelling with right now, if I share this with somebody, they will not understand how I find myself in that situation. But you understand that God knows. And he has an open hand for you, waiting for you to come back unto him, that the Lord can bring you back to himself. And I'm trusting the Lord is speaking to somebody this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And then you have what I characterize here as a cracked vessel. It's not broken. It's not dirty. But it's cracked. Hello, somebody. For some of us that have been here for a few months or a few years, You'll have experienced at some point, you know, with, during winter when they put all the sand on the road and somebody's just driving in front of you, the next thing you hear is crack, and something hits your windscreen, right? It starts out as a small crack. And sometimes it will spread if you don't quickly deal with it. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Hebrews 12, 15. I'm talking of the cracked vessel this morning. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, Lest any root of bitterness springs up to trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Here is the truth. As human beings, from time to time, people will say things that will hurt you. Emotionally. God forbid you might even find a situation where somebody will hurt you physically. But bearing grudge in your heart, letting the root of bitterness take in, can crack your vessel. It will make it impossible for you to accomplish the purpose of God. Imagine if Joseph was carrying around bitterness and he managed to become the prime minister and his brothers show up. Oh boy. If the root of bitterness has taken place, if he allows it to continue to fester, here is the challenge. Somebody shared that in a manner that made sense to me, that the, the problem with bitterness is that it's actually much more of a punishment for the one harboring the bitterness than the one you are harboring the bitterness against. Because the person doesn't have any, he doesn't even remember that he hurt you. Hello, somebody. And then you see them, as soon as you see them, your heart skips a beat. If you have a heart monitor, maybe, and if you have those cardio mobile that records this or whatever, maybe you will have emailed something to your doctor without your permission. <laughs> because your heart will skip. You're like, oh, I've seen this person again. And the person doesn't even have a care in the world. And you are the one that after some time now, you start taking medication. Because that is what happens. Your vessel can become cracked by reason of the root of bitterness. It is easy to let bitterness creep in when somebody does something that hurts us, both physically and emotionally. Physically, obviously, you have to you know, make sure you report that, deal with it up front. But emotionally it becomes harder. And we sometimes do it without even knowing. Without even knowing. And that's where communication comes in. Especially even among couples. And it could be something as simple as the one my wife sometimes will complain to me about from time to time. That, you know, me, I don't know, maybe it's a gift from my house that... The, the Bible says he gives his beloved sleep with sweet sleep. It doesn't, it doesn't take too difficult for me sometimes to fall asleep, right? If I so choose. I drink a cup of coffee at 12.30. By 12.35, I can be sleeping. And so sometimes it becomes something that is a painful thing for her. If I don't recognize that. Sometimes I deal with it for a number of weeks. I don't get, I'm not saying I'm perfect at it. But the point you need to understand is, if I don't acknowledge that and deal with it, you let bitterness begin to sink in. It cracks the vessel. It makes you susceptible for the devil's planning. And anytime the devil wants to witness something wrong to you about that friend, about that spouse, about that partner, he finds a receptive heart. 
because your vessel has become cracked. But I'm trusting this morning the Lord is speaking to somebody. Point number five as I round up. The broken vessel. The broken vessel. Sometimes when I reflect on the life of David, I imagine if David has a therapist in his time. I'm sure after a while the therapist is bros. I think your problem is more than one therapist. We have to have a team of therapists to deal with that issue for you. But that's why David wrote Psalm 31. I want us to go read that. Psalm 31. And I want to read from verse 9. Psalm 31. Throughout his life, David was a man that had a number of ups and downs. But the good thing about David is at times he was cracked. At times he was broken. But the thing David did not do was to depart from God. The moment they come to him and Nathan said, you are that man that did that terrible thing. He did not argue with the man of God. Thank God he didn't chase, take the part of uh, King Saul. He did not argue. He went into a place of prayer. When he counted the people of God and the multitude start to die, he didn't try to say, but you see, we need to know how many. You know, he wasn't making any excuses. He wasn't explaining. He said, God, I am the one that did the counting. Let me be the one to deal with the issue. A broken vessel is one that sometimes through the challenges we go through, we think God has forgotten us. David said in Psalm 31, thank you, verse 9. He said, have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I'm in trouble. He said, my eye, is, my, eye, my eye is consumed with grief, and my soul and my belly. He said, everything within him feels heavy. And I don't know whether you are in that point right now in your journey with God. I need you to understand that when sometimes God takes us through that broken experience, thank God for the Sunday school, I mean the Bible study unit. If you miss that study in the month of February, I encourage you, go to our YouTube channel. And watch that three weeks. When God takes you through that broken path. It's sometimes to get you to the point where you realize. That your dependency has to be of him. And nothing else. Because the moment you continue to still have hope. You'll be trying to look for option. Oh let me go and speak with my friend. Let me see if I can get a loan from the bank. Let me see if I can get to a credit union. Let me talk to my office. You, you are still creating options. But sometimes God takes us through a broken experience because he's trying to mold something special and peculiar out of you and I. That broken vessel, the trial that comes our way is to get us to the point where God will be our only dependence. When Samaria was faced with what they are faced and after all they have done, when the women have started killing their own children and eating, and they come to a point, they went to the king, and the king said, if God does not help you, who am I, from where am I going to help you? Where am I going to source it from? So you need to come to an understanding that as a special purpose vessel that you are, sometimes the Lord might need to break you to get you to the point where you understand what he wants you to be. Our daddy in the Lord, Pastor Ia Deboe, his only ambition was to become the youngest vice, vice chancellor in any university. But when the Lord took him to the point where he wanted to take him to, the level he is now, is higher than any vice chancellor. When somebody, if, when somebody becomes a vice chancellor today, they will go and meet daddy. Say, daddy, the Lord has done it for your son. No? The advanced vice chancellors now that when he calls them, they will drop everything. If they are even in the governing council meeting, they might sometimes drop it and come and see him. Because that's the level God has taken him to. That is what it means when you allow yourself to be broken to the point where the Lord can mold you. A special purpose verse will sometimes will require to go through that broken experience. And finally this morning, the restored verse. The Lord brings trials in our lives to refine us, to purify us. And the purpose is not to defeat us, but for restoration. Can we bow our heart this morning? And pray.